Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello dear, you are welcome to Daily Fountain for today, the Church of Nigeria Daily Devotional, reaching you from ACNN Television, Abuja. It is my prayer that the Lord will give us grace as we study at His feet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father, O oh Lord, as we are about to study at your feet, open our eyes for us to behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Also give us the grace to understand and assimilate what we are about to study through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today is Saturday, December 19th, 2020, and our Bible reading will be taken from Exodus chapter 8, we are looking at verses 20 through 32. Exodus 8, 20 through 32. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell. That no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. And the Lord did so. Thick swarms of flies came into the house of Pharaoh, into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we will be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then we dare not stun us. We we'll go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not Go very far away, intercede for me. Then Moses said, Indeed, I'm going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal decidedly anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither will he let the people go. The word of the Lord. When the word must is involved in anything we are doing, it means that there is a command, there is a directive, and something serious which necessitates compulsion. 
Furthermore, when the world in bursts is also involved, it means that instruction is coming from a superior to a subordinate. It is based on this premise we shall this morning be considering the topic that says we must go very far away. We must go very far away. From the place we've read, we can see God giving instruction to Moses on what to do. When Pharaoh refused the people of Israel to go, the Bible recorded that God was angry. God was very bitter. The wrath of God was heavily on Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And there and then he sent warning to Pharaoh through Moses on the calamity he's about to bring on the life of Pharaoh, his household, and entire Egyptians. However, the Lord provided maximum security for his people at Goshen only if they would go far away from the Egyptians. People of God, God is calling out, out for us to leave those things that entangle us from worshiping him in spirit and in truth. God is telling us to go far away from those things. The pleasures of the world, the sins of commission, it might be the sins of omission, those things that is causing a demarcation for us to have free access to God. Those things that we are doing that ought not to be done. Doing those things that we don't supposed to do. We are being told this morning to go far away from those things. The Egyptians in this circumstance represent those sins. And it's asking us to live that way. For there is nothing that will be of benefits to us. The Bible made us to understand in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, that there is a road that seemed right unto a man, but its end is total destruction. God is telling us in John chapter 14, verse 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, I repeat, no one cometh unto the Father except through me. Jesus is the ultimate way we have to follow. And therefore, we have no reason to be afraid of the devil. He can never do us anything. For the Bible has shown us in Psalm chapter 24, verse 1, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Wherever you are joining me in this study this morning, wherever your people might be, the Lord is in charge. And therefore, we must, as a matter of urgency and necessity, go very far away from the Egyptians. Friends, the Lord is commanding you. The Lord is giving me a command today. The Lord is giving all of us command this morning that we should go far away from the Egyptians. We should try as much as possible to go far away from fornication, to be far away from lies, to be far away from betrayal, to be far away from masturbation, to be far away from adultery, to be far away from idolatry. Those character that portrays the Egyptian's character is telling us this morning, to go far away from those ways. For such will not be in any benefit to us. When we do those things, there is a promise. Our Goshen awaits us. Remember, he told Moses, I'm going to set my people apart to Goshen. Where those calamities, those problems will not touch them. What does it mean? Maximum protection. That is a very superlative provision provided for the people.
to show the maximum security God has for his people only if we go far away from those things. So friends, we have our security in God. All we need to do is for us to stop those things that annoy God. Those things that we think there is life. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ is calling us to come to him. For such is the only way that we can enjoy this maximum protection. Any man that doesn't have the protection of our Lord Jesus Christ is at the back and core of the devil. And as such, the devil can use that person at any given time. But once we are far away from the life of Egyptians, all those things, they entangle us from us worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Bible says that Goshen awaits us. We are comforts. We are everything that we demand, that we require for a better life we have given unto us. And so what are you waiting for? Why must you spend your time wallowing in sin? For the Bible made us to understand for anybody that received Jesus Christ, he's a new creation. And so we have no reason to associate ourselves with Egyptians. Remember, it's a command. We must go far away. It's something that we must have to do. It's not a choice. God is giving us that command. And we must obey that command by going far away from the Egyptians. Remember, the devil has nothing good to offer. I mean, nothing good is meant for the devil to give us. But the Son of Man, Jesus Christ came to give us life so that we'll have that life and have it more abundantly. But what is the motive and intention of the devil? Three things. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give us life. Little wonder, John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him, what will happen? Will not die, but have an everlasting life. It's the perfect and divine assurance coming from our God to us. And therefore, all we need to do is to accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. It's true that you have accepted it, but when you look at your life in self-examination, you see that you must have fallen one way or the other. You still have opportunity to amend your ways this morning. You still have that opportunity to say, Lord, Father, come into my life. Forgive me. Remember, he's knocking at the door of your heart on a daily basis. And if anybody opens, by we say he will come and dine with a person. Can you say, Lord, Father, please, I want you back in your life. And I can tell you, when you say you want God back in your life, God will come. Jesus will come and make that situation to be better. Remember, he fought for the people of Israel and defeated their enemies. That same God that fought for them will still fight for you. I don't know your challenges. Are there some obstacles, some Egyptians, some pharaohs in your way? The Lord will remove them this morning. But you must have to do one thing. You must have to go far away from the Egyptians. When you do that, I can assure you that the maximum security that he promises people and the protection and the blessings and everything that you require will be given unto you and your household. The world is enough for the wise. For the Bible says, he who have an ear, let him hear. May we bow our heads in prayer. Our precious Father, we thank you this morning for giving us grace to see the mystery things out of your word. May this word be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. That at the end of the day, 
we shall be children that you'll be proud of. Thank you, most precious Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.